Hi guys, and welcome to the seventh part of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now, Skyrim isn't just an absolutely brilliant game. It's also a, a sign that Bethesda have learned a few lessons, and they've improved many areas. For example, the character development system is so much easier and so much more interesting in Skyrim than in, say, Oblivion. It just is. And the factions in Skyrim are more interesting. They're more differentiated from each other, which is for me, a lot more immersive. But there is one area they seem to have stuck with an old formula that quite often got a lot of complaints, and that area is the user interface. Now, there are several problems with it, um, including the fact that basically all the fonts and things are a bit too large, but it's a lot of little things that get to you, like the bottom bar, which covers some of the options. Um, it's not exactly neat, in that respect. But it's also the fact that it starts off centered on the top items. So for example, as you can see now, I've had to scroll down to get all of these options available. But it's it's not an unpleasant interface. I mean, it's nice that you can sort of see the item rather large and zoom in on it to get a better look. It'd be nice if you could rotate it, but I mean, that's not that bad. Now, spells works a little bit better because you have less spells, but you still have the problem where you have to scroll down to see your full list of spells. Um, even though it starts with a lot of space at the top. But obviously, I'm not making this video just to complain about the user interface, but to show you the solution. And that solution is something called the Sky UI, Skyrim User Interface. And as you can see, the fonts are much smaller and you can see a lot more items at once. So it's a lot, it's immediately a lot more information. You can also see weight and value of each item and sort by them, ascending and descending. Uh, which is very useful when you get overloaded and you're trying to find things to drop. And, of course, you can filter by categories, as you can in the normal um, user interface, but you get these cool little icons at the top, um, so you can flick through them. It's just very, very nice. It feels far more like a uh, PC user interface. Now, obviously, it's more about how the user interface feels, and I can tell you, after using this for a while now, it feels brilliant. It just, it's really easy, it's really clean and crisp. Um, you have absolutely no trouble uh, using this whatsoever. It's very nice indeed. Um, but in most ways, it's just like the default user interface. But there is one very, very useful little difference. With this user interface, you can actually filter by typing in things. So, as you can see, I typed in novice, and it lists only items with that word in it. Um, and it, it auto-submits. So, as you can see, I type in boots. And it's, that is so useful when you're trying to find one particular item, when you've got thousands of items in your miscellaneous list or something. It is really useful, and something that feels now like it should have always been there. I can't imagine playing without it now. It just feels so natural. It's a really nice little addition. And you can even change the icons. These are the straight icons, the T3T straight icons. But if you want, you can change them for the T3T curved icons, which are slightly more artistic, a little bit more... They have that hand-drawn feeling, which is very, very cool. Um, and then there's another option called the Celtic icons, uh, which are even more stylized. Um, and again, very, very cool. It really is just a matter of personal taste. So pick the icons you like and play with those. Now, right now, it's only the inventory that has been overhauled. They are planning on doing everything, I think. I, I can tell you they're working on the magic system, uh, but I can't show it you yet. Uh, I've seen hints of it, but I've not been, I've not been testing it yet. Um, but it should be equally as cool as the inventory. And I'm pretty sure they're going to actually change every part of the menu. So this is one of those mods that's going to get updates. So keep your eyes open. So... Let's go and install the Sky UI. Now, the first thing we're going to actually have to do is install the Skyrim Script Extender. Now, a lot of you will already know what that is, but for those of you that don't, basically the Script Extenders in Oblivion, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, etc. Um, basically gave 
mod authors a lot more power. It allowed them to make things that they could not have made otherwise. And the Skyrim script extender is no exception. Now, obviously, it's very, very early days. We don't even have a creation kit. But there are already some things that um, the SKSE is allowing us to do that we couldn't do without it. Um, and that's because the SKSE development team specifically added these functions for uh, the Sky UI mod. Now, installing SKSE is pretty easy. Um, just download the uh, archive. It's the 7Z archive. Just download that. I'm going to download it to my desktop. Um, it's pretty small, and it should download in seconds. There we go. You're going to need your game folder, your Skyrim game folder. Now, that is not the same as your data folder. Um, it's the folder where you find the TESV Dot exe file. This is the executable for the game. And then you need to extract the archive you just downloaded. So that's the SKSE archive. You need to extract that. And I'm going to extract it here. So I get this folder. And then open that folder. In that folder, you will see a source folder, which you can totally ignore, and six files, all beginning with the letters SKSE. Copy those six files straight in to your game folder. And that's it. The script extender is installed. Now, to run the game with the script extender enabled, you need to run the skseloader.exe. Um, and you can just run it from here. You can double click and run it. But I like to make a shortcut for this. So I'm going to create a shortcut. And then I'm going to move that shortcut to my desktop. And I'll close this down. So there's my shortcut. And I don't like this name, so I'm going to rename that, rename that to Skyrim SKSE. So I know I'm running the game in SKSE mode. And I want to change the icon. So I'm going to go into my Steam Games icons and pick the Skyrim one. And apply. So that looks a little better, as you can see. And that's it. To run the game now in um, with the script enabler, the script extender enabled, I just double click this. Now, once in game, you can actually check to make sure that the script extender is like running by pressing Dragon the console Wars. key and typing in get SKSE version. And then enter. And it will tell you which version of SKSE you are using. So there you go. If you get no message, you are not running SKSE correctly. And that's it. As you can see, I'm running with the script extender. I can also confirm that if you are using the latest version of Skyrim 4GB, um, it will automatically run the script extender for you. So if you want to run with the script extender, and in four gigabyte mode, simply carry on clicking the Skyrim4gb.exe file as you always did. It will run the game and the script extender, no problem. Now, I'd just like to say for people who are not used to the script extender, this might feel like a lot of trouble for just one mod, but it's not for just one mod. The script extenders in Oblivion, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas uh, were used by hundreds, probably thousands of mods. Some of the best mods out there required this tool. So in Skyrim, it is almost certainly going to be the same. You're going to be using a lot of great mods that use this anyway, so you might as well install it. Um, there's no performance hit in doing it, and there's no reason not to run it, so just install it. Trust me, you won't regret it. So now we're ready to actually install the mod Sky UI. Now, at the time of making this video, there isn't a Nexus page for this mod yet. There will be by the time you watch this video. So you will probably be clicking the download with manager button and it will appear here um, and you will then have it appear in your mods. Or you could have downloaded it manually. You can download the file manually and you will have something like Sky UI 1.0.7.z, something like that. 
and you can then create, you can add a full mod from file using this button, which is what I'm going to do now. The end result will be the same, a mod called Sky UI. To install this is really pretty easy. You just click the activate button and you get a nice little installer. Um, if you click install, it will install the mod, mod with the default icons. If you exit, it will leave the mod without installing. If you go to the icon section, these are the default icons here. These are the defaults. Um, but for example, there are two other sets of icons you can choose from. It's completely up to you. I'm going to stick with the default ones for this. Go back and then hit install. If it asks you to overwrite any files, it will be the font config.txt. Click yes. If you've got a custom font installed, the font config.txt will get changed. Click yes. Don't worry, you won't lose your fonts. The installer knows what to do with that file to keep it so all your old faults fonts stay. And that's it. You have now installed this with the mod manager. So what happens if you don't like to use NMM or can't use the Nexus mod manager for some reason? Well, I'll show you how to manually install. Let me just deactivate this uh, right now. So I've now deactivated the mod in Nexus mod manager. It's as if I never had the mod. And I'm going to open my Skyrim data folder. Take this, um, the archive that you download it and extract it as a folder. I've already done this. And this is the contents you'll find inside it. You can ignore the FOMOD folder. That's all information for um, the mods installer. You can ignore that. Well, the first thing we're going to do is copy the interface files. Go into interface and also go into interface on your data folder. The first thing I want you to check is do you have a font config text in your data folder already? If you don't, then all you need to do is copy all of these files like so. And the Sky UI is now installed. It's it's pretty easy. It's you know it's now installed. If I go back up to the main folder. I also have an SKSE folder. So go up in your data folder. If if you don't have a folder here called SKSE, simply copy this. In fact, copy this anyway. Even if you have an SKSE folder here, copy it anyway straight into your data folder. And if it asks to overwrite anything, click yes to all. Uh, what that's doing is adding a plugin. There you go. And then finally, there is a Sky UI Extras. If you open this, you will find three sets of icons. And if I go back to interface, if you go in here, let's say I want to look at the Celtic one. There's a nice little preview that shows you what you're looking at. Plus, here we have Sky UI icons underscore cat. You literally copy this into this folder and click copy and replace if that's the one you want. So just find the icons you want. Let's pick those. Copy. Copy and replace. You've now picked alternative icons. Um, and that's it. It's pretty simple. Now, I did mention what, what to do. I did mention um, checking for the font config and I'm going to show you what to do if you have a font config already so let me just delete everything I just added which would be so I think six things selected six yeah so if I'll delete those now let's assume I have a font installed I have one that's kind of cool, the Celtic font. So I've just installed that. And as you can see, now in my data interface, I have a font config.txt. Right? You can no longer copy all of these files to install 
um, Sky UI because you will kill the font config text that was installed by the other mod. So what you need to do is copy everything except the font config text. Then you need to open your existing font config text with notepad like so and the font config text that comes with the mod. And inside the one that comes with uh, with the mod, you're looking for one, a line map list font equals Futura condensed normal. Copy this, copy it, and copy it straight into the one that's actually already installed. It doesn't actually matter whether you install whether you put this here or all the way at the bottom, but I'm going to put it here so it looks similar to this and as you can see I've now got the list font but I also have for example the dialogue font is this one called M-A-E-L that's one of the Celtic fonts and that's it then save this and close it and that's it it's installed do remember again even if you're doing this you still have to copy the SKSE plugin as well but now you've manually installed it now one thing I forgot to mention um, with the font config dot text if you're doing it manually is when you copied the font the map list font equals Futura condensed normal over here into your into your games font config dot text um, you can leave it as Futura condensed normal if you wish and that will be the font used by Sky UI by default but if you'd installed it using NMM it actually changes this font to match whatever your everywhere medium font is and if you want to do the same for example if you want the Celtic font so I will pick the Celtic font here if you look at the map everywhere medium font and copy the the text after the equal sign copy it and go along to the list font and copy over everything after so I've copied the mile normal and I paste it onto the list font and then save this I've now used um, the Celtic font for the Sky UI as well. It's and as you can see, Celtic font. Now, the installer, the NMM installer, did would have done this automatically for you anyway, but if you want these fonts and you've manually installed, you have to remember to copy that across. But as you can see, keeps the fonts. Very cool. And that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully you've got the Sky UI installed and working and I hope you're going to enjoy the mod. I, I really do think it's a major improvement. So if you do enjoy the mod, be sure to go along to the mod authors page and endorse it. I'm sure he'll enjoy that. I'm sure the whole team will appreciate that. Uh, if you liked this video, click the like button. I know I appreciate that. And I hope to see you for the next Mod Sanctuary, whenever that's going to be. And until then, have fun.